Okay, Chair, we're live. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's Planning and Environmental uh, Committee, Planning Committee. I'd like to begin by welcoming those members of the public and press who are watching the live stream of this meeting by the Council's YouTube page. Due to the government guidance on social distancing, this meeting is being held remotely. A decision summary and minutes of the meeting will be produced in the usual way, and a recording of the meeting will be available to view on the Council's YouTube page. To enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, I will ask members of the committee to keep their video camera switched on for the duration of the meeting and to keep their microphone muted except when I invite you to speak. Officers will join us to introduce their reports in the usual way. Any members wishing to ask questions or make a comment should indicate this by clicking the raised hand function in the participant screen. This is the blue hand. When I invite you to speak, please unmute your microphone, ask your question, and then please mute again to allow the officer to respond. As with all new arrangements, especially those involving new systems, there is always a risk that we may run into some technical problems, and I would ask for your patience if we do. Should this occur, I would declare an adjournment while the fault is addressed and the public broadcast will be paused. If it is not possible to address the fault and the meeting may be, the meeting may be abandoned until such a time as it can be reconvened. I will begin our meeting by doing a roll call of members of the committee to ensure you are here. Councillor Bond. Hello, yes, I'm here. Councillor Brown. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Casey. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Hiller. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Hogg. Present. Councillor Hussein. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Iqbal. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Jones. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Rush. Yes, I'm here. And Councillor Warren. I'm here. Thank you. And just for the record, I'm here, Councillor Harper. We also have in attendance uh, Nick Harding, Stephen Turnbull, or Nick Harding's Head of Planning, Steve Turnbull, Planning Solicitor, Dan Kelly, who's the Democratic Service Officer, and Karen Dunleavy, also from Democratic Services. We'll move to item one. Apologies for absence, please, Dan. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And we have no apologies for absence. Thank you. Item two is declarations of interest. None of those, thank you very much. Item three then is the minutes of the previous meetings, pages 30, sorry, three to 10 in your packs or on your screen. We have been asked to approve these minutes on from the 18th of February, 2020, it's a correct record. Can I ask if any member did not agree with the proposal to click the right hand function now and speak? Therefore, the minutes are agreed and we can move on. Thank you. Item four is emergency procedures for applications during the COVID-19 period, pages 11 to 14 in your packs or on your screen. Mr. Harding, would you like to introduce, please? Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, due to the restrictions that are currently in place, um, lots of authorities have looked to see how decisions could be made on those planning applications that would normally come before the planning committee. And different authorities have responded in different ways. So some authorities are carrying on with meetings as normal, uh, but in a virtual way, and other authorities have increased the level of delegation to officers in consultation with members. Um, and this is is what we're proposing to do here at Peterborough, um, obviously subject to your approval. So the proposed scheme that uh, we're putting to you today would involve uh, all those applications that would normally come before planning committee. And what we intend to do is to consult on those applications with uh, Councillor Harper and the uh, group representatives, so that's uh, Councillor Hogg and Councillor Iqbal. Um, if that consultation feedback uh, suggests that they're comfortable with a delegated decision being made um, by officers, 
on that particular application, then that's what will happen. However, if the feedback indicates that there is a preference for uh, the application to come before committee in the public interest, then that application would come before committee in the usual way. Um, in the context of running that meeting, it would be held in the exact same way as a normal planning committee, um, but it would be online. So by that, I mean that uh, we would have supporters and objectors to application being able to speak and present to committee. You'd be able to ask them questions, so on and so forth. So there'd be no change. The only thing that we would do uh, that would be slightly different would be to request that all of the speakers uh, submit a written text that could be read out or distributed to all, all members on the committee just in the event that um, the speaker's connection goes down part way through the meeting and that's not able to be re-established but in all other ways the meeting um, would be run uh, as normal. The reason why offices have come forward with this proposal, a hybrid proposal so to speak, um, where uh, potentially more applications could be determined by officers in consultation with um, key members is because we recognise that holding the online meetings is, is that little bit more time consuming and challenging um, and members may feel that uh, the arrangements that we are putting forward are a fair and reasonable uh, way to proceed. Um, so that's all I've got to say for now, Chairman. I'm happy still with us Nick sorry I thought I lost him then that is he still with us Nick uh, yes I'm still with you okay so right. we lost you there for a second okay thank you very much uh, Nick for that presentation uh, would any members of the committee wish to ask a question would you press a blue hand I've got Graham Casey first Councillor Casey thank you thank you chair um, I've just got one question because looking at the 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 four criteria it doesn't mention ward councillors at all in that consultation period is is there a reason for that or is that is there any opportunity to involve them in that consultation just because they'll have uh, they might have another another insight that could be taken into account uh through you chairman um Obviously, when an application is out to uh, normal consultation, i.e. before it gets anywhere near a uh, determination stage, then the local ward members have got an opportunity to make comment on those applications um, and uh, indeed call in that application to committee. And if there is a member call in, a ward member call in um, of uh, a particular application, then that would feature in the report that we would put to um, Councillor Harper and the two group reps, uh, and therefore that uh, will be taken into consideration in their feedback to me on whether or not they feel um, a delegated decision would be appropriate in that stance. Okay. Okay, Councillor Casey. Yes, Councillor Rush then, please. Am I, no. Am I live? Yeah. yeah. On the consultation between the chairman and the group reps, does it have to be a unanimous decision between them all, or is it a majority decision? Uh, again, through you, Chairman. Um, the uh, feedback from the group reps and the chairman isn't uh, an actual decision by them. Um, we can't technically call it a decision um, because that would fall foul of the requirements of the operation of a, a, a committee system. So um, what I'd be doing is listening to the feedback that I get uh, and I would be making a decision on the basis of that, that feedback. Um, so it's a slightly sort of nuanced approach, I, I, I agree, um, but uh, clearly I'm not going to 
um, determine an application where um, I get some strong feedback either way from any particular member um, that's Okay, I think you were cut short again then right at the end. Did you would you did you want to come back? You lost your last bit. Um I concluded by saying that I wouldn't um override the strong feedback from any um member that was being consulted, either the group reps or the chairman. Um so it wouldn't necessarily come down to a um one against two in favour of a um, a uh, delegated decision. It all depends on the feedback that I get from that one member who considers strongly that um, a committee decision is more appropriate on that particular application than um, an officer decision. Okay, Councillor Ruth. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've got nobody else with their hand up on the screen. Anybody want to ask a question? No, no questions. Would anybody like to make comment at all, please? Okay, we'll move on. Sorry, Joe, okay. I just want to make one comment. I don't know if yes. I think Vicky's yeah. hand up as well. Um, it was just members' views on how many applications they would consider coming to a virtual planning committee, or sort of a maximum number. I don't know what members' views might be on that. Okay, Dan, I've got all sorts of people coming in on that one. So <laughs> Nick came first. Nick, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, just um, before members comment on um, what Daniel has said, um, I don't think we could realistically apply a fixed maximum number of applications for any particular committee. Um, as you can imagine, there are some applications which are going to be more straightforward than others. So if we have a, an application for 250 homes and it's spectacularly controversial, um, then we might end up with um, just having one, two or three applications on a particular committee. Alternatively, if we had um, five, six uh, very, very straightforward uh, applications, um, then that is achievable um, on a single agenda. So I think we just have to be sort of intelligent as to how we structure um, the content of the meetings, depending upon the complexity of the applications that come before us. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. Councillor, I saw your hand go on, then go off again. Did you want to come in? Um, no, Nick pretty much uh, said exactly what I was going to say, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Hogg? I just wanted to say that um, obviously this is all new territory for, for, for everybody um, and, and clearly until we've actually had a proper planning committee meeting where we've gone through that process, um, we're not really going to know um, what our limitations are with this new process. Um, and obviously once we've had one or two meetings, then hopefully um, Nick will be able to um, load the, uh, in con conjunction with Jan and yourself, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, with with the correct amount, um, depending on, uh, as he says, the uh, the content of those applications. Yep, I'd agree with that. Anybody want to come back on anything else? Councillor Rush came on. Are you? Yes. Where where we used to have site visits, sometimes the site visits was very useful to to determine what the application is so we will be doing away with everything like that won't we that's my question nick nick would you like to answer that for us please um at risk of not answering the question chairman um what's happening with uh the gradual relaxation of um the, the shutdown is such that any advice I give now might well not be relevant at the time at which 
we're heading towards a virtual planning committee. Sure. So I think that uh, any advice about whether or not a site visit is going to take place um, will be determined upon um, what, what government advice is out there at the time of a uh, committee agenda being prepared. I think the intention is, is that if it complies with the government guidance and we can sure or um, people's health and well-being, then there is no reason why we couldn't facilitate site visits. Um, but at, at this particular moment in time, I don't think it, it is safe uh, for us to conduct site visits in the usual way. And I think it would be contrary to um, the government guidance that's currently. In okay, thank you very much. Councillor Hiller. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, in, in agreeing with what Nick has just said, I, I would suggest, Chair, the, the critical element of any site visit from uh, the COVID point of view is, in fact, the tour bus where we're all fairly cheek but jowl. I would suggest that if there was one particular item that was being heard by a virtual committee and a site visit you determined and Nick determined was essential, then we could arrive there by separate means and uh, socially distance ourselves actually on site. I think that that would be quite uh, quite easy to, uh, to, to organise and maintain. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think it's, it's going to be um, one we'll have to look at each one in turn and see one is, is site visits necessary uh, would be beneficial because as you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of that because a lot of the time if you can't see it, you can't really feel the, the problem or sometimes the objection, but obviously other things, may, maybe it's not necessary at all. So we'll have to deal with it one by one. Would you agree with that, Nick? Yes, Chairman, I, I do agree with that. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Case, are you back on? Just, it's just really, a, a, I suppose, an idea really. Have we, is there any guidance on the use of drones for site for sort of virtual site visits? Um, I don't know, Nick. Did you want to answer that? I think I would have thought that would have been something to look into. Certainly. Uh, through you, I'm not aware that uh, Peterborough City Council has uh, a drone of its own um, or, or is licensed to um, operate one currently. Uh, what we can certainly do is um, try and be a little bit more comprehensive in the photography that we use uh, for our um, presentations to you um, and look at the possibility of um, using video. That might yeah. be an option for us. Yeah, I think that's good. I think we need, you know, need to make sure that at the end of the day that we're as fair as we can be uh, considering the situation we're in that we've, we've we've done all we can to, to view everything we can and see everything we can before a decision is made so i think it's something worth looking at councillor hiller yeah th thank you chair if, if a drone and I, I think that's quite a good suggestion actually by, by councillor casey if, if a drone is determined to be um, essential inverted commas one of the freelance uh, reporters that works for the Peterborough Telegraph is actually a qualified drone pilot with his own bit of kit. And uh, he's, he's particularly, he's, he's done from work for us in the past. And uh, I'm sure at, at a reasonable rate, um, uh, he, he would be more than happy to, uh, to, to do that. Yeah. Good, it's something worth looking at then. So we'll, we'll take that as uh, something to look into as necessary. Okay, good. Anybody else want to make any comment at all? Or any further questions? Are you okay, Dan, with the answer that you received? Yes, you thank are. you. Good. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, then we'll move to the vote on this. Um, the recommendation is as follows. The Head of Planning to be given authority to determine the agenda item subject to consultation with the committee chairman and opposition group representatives or their substitutes if they're not available. Chairman and opposition group representatives have two working days to respond to the consultation. The outcome of the consultation will either be that the head of planning will determine the item in accordance with officer, sorry, officer recommendation, or that the item will be presented to a virtual meeting of the normal committee. The virtual committee meetings will allow for public speaking, 
members' questions as per our normal arrangement. And it shall be broadcast to the public. For clarity, then, I will ask each of you in turn to turn on your mics and confirm you are for or against. Councillor Bond. I'm for. Councillor Brown. Councillor Four. Four. Casey. Four. Councillor Hiller. Councillor Hiller. Oh, I think I might have lost him. No, I've lost him. No, I think we've lost him. Yes, we're back. Councillor Hiller. Councillor Hiller, can you unmute and hear us? Yeah. Can you hear me, Dan? Yes, we can hear you. You're back. I am four. Thank you, Councillor Hiller. Councillor Hogg. Councillor mm -hmm. Hogg. Four. Thank you. Councillor Hussein. Councillor Hussein, you've turned your video off. Can you unmute? Yeah, um, hold on. Okay, hold on. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Can are you for, Councillor Hussein? Yeah, I'm for, for. I thought that's what you said. Councillor Iqbal? For. Councillor Jones? For. Councillor Rush? For. Councillor Warren? For. Thank you, and I'm for too, so that's a unanimous decision. Thank you very much. Thank you for, that means the recommendation is therefore agreed. This actually brings the meeting to an end and the live stream will now be terminated. Before it is, could I please say thank you to all of you for attending today. I think it went very well. And thank you very much to the officers for your support and Dan, especially for getting this all put together for us with your colleagues, very much appreciated. And um, I think it'd be a lot more fun when we have a full uh, planning decision to discuss but that's great I'm looking forward to that it's an opportunity so again thank you very much everybody and we'll see you again uh, next time take thank care you. of yourself and be care thank be well you.